Are we here? We're good. Hey, all right, you made it to the end of the video. No, it's the beginning. Hi, how's it going? All right, this is a big fun video. Welcome, hello. I'm building, assembling, clearly reading a teleprompter. All right, I'm building, assembling a Fender Jazzmaster. I've done tellies, I've done strats, and uh, it was time for one of these. So it's gonna be a big video, and maybe you can share it around, save it, bookmark it, um, print it out, copy it, I don't care. And you can use this as a guide, you know, for now and later. Maybe you're like, how did I do that part for the thing on the stuff? There you go, you got it. Also, got an awesome giveaway. I partnered with Sweetwater and they've sponsored this video and we're giving away a few Music Nomad maintenance kits. So like a bundle. This giveaway is US only because they're gonna ship it directly to you. So anybody complaining about that, I've done, I've done worldwide, I've done Canada only. It's just the way it is. So what are the things? Uh, well, first one is, uh, first part is a thing. Uh, so it's three pieces. You got the fret polishing kit, you got the precision setup gauge six piece set, and you got a grip one all in wonder, string winder, cutter, and puller. So check out the link in the description to enter the giveaway. I will not contact you about the prize. It's gonna be all done through the external site in the link in the description. None of that stuff like, hey, it's me. Contact me on Telegram, no. All right, I got a bunch of the Music Nomad maintenance stuff. It's my favorite, it's been my favorite for years. And you'll see it, I'll be using it in the video as well. So, let's get into the build. First of all, we'll go over all the parts. And I'll mention that Sweetwater sent me three crucial pieces. The guitar neck, the uh, pickups, and the tuners. So, the most important part, I always say, is the neck. First thing, is this Jazzmaster neck. Roasted maple, look at that. Look at the uh, figuring there. Roasted maple, with these cool inlays, and uh, I think it's jumbo frets, maybe medium jumbo frets. Super satiny, smooth, awesome, really cool neck. It's also got this E. I don't know what that is. Uh, and the inlays, I thought they were just black, but they're like, uh, looks like a purloid kind of thing. So next, the pickups, this is huge. This is a set of Fender Cunefe Cobalt Chrome Jazzmaster pickups. So you got the Cunefe pickup in the neck, and you got the Cobalt in the bridge. Thanks to Fender, they uh, provided that through Sweetwater. So this is all the Sweetwater stuff first. Uh, and then you got a, a set of Fender locking tuners. This time they're in black, so I'm going with like a black theme, like black hardware theme, and uh, locking tuners. They add a little bit of weight to the neck, but we'll, we'll try them out. I've always been a fan of locking tuners. Makes changing strings easier, that's it. Doesn't do anything else. Uh, moving on to the body. So this is also crucial. This is a Fender American Performer body that I bought from Stratosphere Parts. And you can see it's like a satin Lake Placid Blue. So I'll be taking off the strap buttons, replacing them with some black ones. We'll talk about the rest of the parts uh, we got here. Got some genuine Jazzmaster knobs. Don't ask how much these cost. You can look it up, it's ridiculous how much I paid for that. Come closer, come, come hang out over here. Come on, what are you doing over there? Got the uh, three switch, three switch, three position, I'm just reading, three position switch, it's a tongue twister. And uh, that's Jazzmaster. Most of these things are made in Taiwan. So that one's made in Taiwan. Um, and then I've got the two pots. Got a audio pot and a linear pot. And they're both one meg. And if the sound's cutting out, because I'm not talking to the mic. Uh, I'll explain during the video when we're using these, why I picked these and why they're recommended. Because even I don't know, I gotta look it up right now. These are the uh, strap buttons. And they're from a company called Music Lily. A lot of this stuff I got on Amazon, and you'll see Music Lily. I guess that's one of their brands that they carry, because it wasn't advertised as that. Neck plate, bolts. These are bolts, not screws. I'm joking, by the way. A lot of people can't tell that I'm joking. This is a... Uh, uh, treble bleed, so that's going to be part of the wiring. Treble bleed is used so you can turn down the volume and you don't cut off the highs, so it doesn't turn into like a muddy mess of tone. Okay, pick guard screws. Oh, I'll mention that too. I'm waiting for the pick guard. I had to order a custom shape pick guard. It's from WD Custom and it's in the mail. Jazzmaster is not going to have all the, all the wiring that you normally find in a traditional one. It's going to have the wiring like an American Pro. That's what I'm going for. So, a little bit simpler, uh, easier to wire, easier to maintain. I never really found I use those other features 
on uh, a regular Jazz Master, like the uh, rhythm circuit. This is gonna be part of it too. Just one of these, this is an orange drop. It's gonna be part of the wiring. Um, I've got a back plate. I may not put it on, we'll see. It doesn't actually, the screw holes. I, I think this was for a Strat that I had. I didn't buy this, it, it came off another guitar. Might be from a classic vibe Strat. One piece left, one piece left. This is a Music Lily vintage style trim or vibrato. And that's gonna fit on there. So I will have a vibrato system. Uh, have I left anything out? If I did, that's what editing's for. That's what editing's for. That's what editing's for. Editing's for. That's what editing. This is uh, the certificate of authentication, authenticity. It came with this, so it's just proof that that's this. Okay, we'll get to it in a second. Everything's gonna be time stamped if you're looking for a certain section. We're gonna do the setup, we're gonna play it, we're gonna do a bunch of stuff, so it's gonna be a fun video. All right, let's go. That's what editing's for. Okay, let's get things started with, uh, first, before building it, we're gonna take a look at Fender's Mod Shop, and it's their website on their official site. You can take pretty much like all the different pieces they have and do like a 3D mock-up. So let's do a Jazz Master. We'll try to pick as close as possible the stuff that I got. So Lake Placid Blue. They don't have the neck with the uh, the inlays like I have, but I'll pick something. They got a roasted maple. The one I have is roasted maple with the black inlays. Also the bridge is different. You have to do a Jazz Master bridge in here. Uh, you can't do black hardware like I'm doing. But anyways, the idea is to get a look at, at what you could get and then, you know, see what the price is on Fender's official site. They only have a couple options of Jazzmaster pickups. They don't offer the Kunafe and the Cobalt, same bridge. Um, but it is a, it is like a, a pro pro Jazzmaster. It doesn't have the treble. What am I saying? It doesn't have it doesn't have all the Jazzmaster controls and stuff, you know. And uh, there's the price when you put it all together, and you can see what it is. And then from this. So you're looking like two grand. From this, I did a few mock-ups, so let's bring them up here. I, I picked a few different colors. I got, uh, picked four different colors, and then I decided I like the white plastic with the black. I think it has a good blend, and you can see the other three that I did, and then I ended on this one. I think this one works the best, and this is what it's gonna look like at the end. Hopefully. You'll probably wanna sit for this part. If you're driving, pull over. I'm replacing the strap buttons. I don't know why. <laughs> it's not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. Uh, I uh, yeah. So we're taking the original strap buttons off, just because I want to have the black color, like the black hardware, matching over the whole guitar. So uh, it comes with the screws. It comes with these little plastic pads. I guess they're like a protection pad. The screws are actually too small, so I'm reusing the screw that is from the original Performer body. But I'm gonna use the little white fuzzy pad. I don't know what they're actually called. I'm just gonna call them Fender Fuzzy Pads. And I like the white actually showing because I find the white will match with the plastic. So it's like uh, it's like fashion coordination kind of. It's not just making a guitar. It's all this color coordination, right? So you got the black and uh, the black screws would have been nicer, but they're too small. They would have just like gone right into the the drilled out hole and that'd be no good for anybody well unless you like that unless you like wobbly straps falling off your guitar when you're playing or something then go for it but I, i'd rather have it be secure so just using my makeup brush here now that's actually a music nomad brush and it's good for stuff like that there we go all right now it's time to install the fender locking tuners and you can see on the neck here it's got one hole or one screw hole for each tuner, actually one on each side. So it's not it's not a direct fit, so we're gonna have to do a lot of modding. And when I think back to it now, this is actually the most work I had to do for the whole guitar. Because these Fender locking tuners, they have the modern two pins that you drop in on certain necks. Not gonna happen in this case. So, And they actually don't fit in the holes as well, so we're gonna have to do some reaming. And I know that sounds weird, but I have a tool to do that. And it's uh, nice and clean. It actually does a really nice job, so. And these are staggered locking tuners. There are three short posts and three long posts. And I'll show you where you put them. And uh, it all makes sense when I put it together. Um, I'm just trying to compare them. I didn't know they were staggered at first, but it's always good to look at the things you're trying to install to make sure you do it right. So this is the reamer. 
I'm gonna put the uh, I'll put a link to uh, to the uh, the product in the description because I had to buy this um, a couple of years ago. I had to remote some. <laughs> it sounds so wrong to say that. I was reaming some whole. Oh my god! Never, you know what? I'm just gonna stop there. And uh, it's a lot of work, but it, it does a nice clean job, and it did exactly what I need. The tool is not that expensive. You can attach it to a drill, like an electric drill, if you want. I just do it by hand. It works well. It's kind of like an ice auger. If you ever gone ice fishing, nobody has, but uh, in case you ever have, then okay. Enough talking. Let's just watch this beautiful stuff I do with the drill thing that does the stuff. Okay. Okay, you can see that was a bit of work and I had to keep uh, reaming and then trying to fit it and then more reaming and doing the drilling. So that, yeah, just this part took me the longest and it was the most work. So maybe you want to get a neck that has the, uh, the drop-in tuners. I didn't mind doing this the first time I've ever done this kind of thing. So let's move on. All right, time for the neck and uh, neck plate installation and the four screws. Okay, your classic M190 here, never heard of it. <laughs> it's a Music Lily brand again from Amazon. And I just bought it because it had the black metal. So uh, it's also got the spacer, the plastic spacer. I'm choosing not to use it. I guess you might put it on if you wanted the, the metal to not touch directly to the paint or if you wanted to add a bit of spacing for the screw. Maybe it depends on the body. Um, I found I didn't need to, but anyways, the neck fits nicely in this in this pocket. There's no pressure needed. It just has a perfect fit, and I'm lucky there. Sometimes they're tight, and you gotta like wedge them in, but 
Anyways, this one was good. So just taking a look at the spacer and I'm like, am I going to use it? And uh, I already know I'm not because this is after the fact recording the audio. So, but you can use it if you want. There's nothing wrong with it. And I've got this paraffin wax. I've had this thing for years. I call it a thing. <laughs> it looks like, looks like some kind of drugs or something. No, I bought it from uh, I think a grocery store. You can buy it and use it for, you know, people when they make jars of jam, you know, that, that thing I've never done before. Anyways, the point of this, you can use a candle too. It's to uh, make the screws have a, like a lubrication when you're putting it into a, a new neck or a new, well, in this case, the body's not new, but the, uh, yeah, just to ha have like help with reducing the, re the resistance. I don't know what I'm trying to say. You can tell this is all planned and scripted, right? So yeah. Um, there's not really a wrong way to do this. I know some people say cross thread, like do one and then go cross. Uh, you know, it's, it's, it doesn't really matter. I don't think it matters to me. Tell me why it matters. Maybe I'm wrong. Not wrong often, but when I am, I'll fight you for it to be right. No, I don't care. Uh, so yeah, just put the screws in there. I think it was a little bit tight towards the end. And that could have been because I wasn't using the spacer. Or maybe these screws are a bit long. Anyways, it, it worked out. Uh, you just don't want to hear like cracking sounds and stuff or pieces breaking. That that wouldn't be good. That's the the opposite of what you want to do when you're putting one of these together. So fit nicely. It's looking great. So now let's get the bridge put in. A music lily. And it's the MX something 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 159. I, I don't know. It'll be in the description if you want to find it. It's actually really good quality. Uh, it's like a heavy got a heavy uh, block and uh, the saddles feel good the arm feels good everything's good quality and it wasn't crazy expensive it was actually a really decent price and so I'm just checking it out it's a vintage style so it's got the six screws I'm gonna do the same thing I'm gonna put some you don't have to do this but I'm gonna put some paraffin wax just to make it uh, you know just so these aren't the original screws that were in there so just in case they're you know a little bit tight or don't want to go in perfectly but they were actually pretty good so you don't have to do this like I mentioned so you're gonna put in all six screws and then you kind of don't put them in fully tight you want to give them a little gap so the bridge can swing and then you can sort of adjust to uh, your taste whatever you want to do and uh, I go back and fix this later so see how it flips up a little bit but yeah really easy to install and then I'm putting the arm in to see how it goes and uh, later I'll be putting a, a little screw under that arm and I'll explain that uh, when we get to that part so nothing uh, too exciting here I'll flip it over and we'll do the trem claw so you get this is part of the same kit it's all part of the bridge you get three screws no two screws and you get three springs that's what I meant to say so you're gonna put it on there put the screws in and they give you a pick I don't know what, what, why I don't need a pick. I got one. <laughs> so put the, the two screws and uh, with this performer body, I already had the screws drilled, screw holes drilled because it was previously set up when it was in its previous life. So I'm putting the three springs on here. Some people use five springs. Some people use uh, palm springs. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, I tried three and I'm like, that's kind of tight. I think maybe we'll just go for two for now and uh, end up taking one off. Look at that. Uh, I'm not even lying. I, I was telling the truth. Okay, now we're getting to the electronics. This is probably the most fun part for me. This is the part I actually enjoy. I like doing the soldering. I find it relaxing. If you're not rushed, okay, so here's my diagram. I don't remember where I downloaded this, but it's for an American professional jazz master because that's the wiring I'm, I'm gonna be doing. So I've got two pots here. I've got an audio pot 
for the uh, the volume and then I've got a linear pot for the tone control and uh, I'm just popping them through there's some shielding already in place here um, I guess it helps with the grounding too maybe that's what that is I think that's actually grounding not really shielding um, so you got a washer and you've got a nut and you're just gonna connect those and uh, just do it by hand you know not too tight just get it in place and then I'll, we'll tighten it later I've got that blue screwdriver from Mu music nomad I'm using that it's another washer a washer and a dryer no a washer and a nut screw nut nuts this is nuts pretty nuts okay got those connected and then tighten it a bit more again just hand tightening I don't recommend you don't need power tools I don't recommend foot tightening I don't even know what that means but just do it with your hand okay and we've got the three-way switch and I've never worked with one of these before so like I mean I've worked with guitars that had them installed but I've never installed one so this is cool putting it through again just popping it in same thing got a washer and a nut hand tighten it and uh, then tighten it a bit better with this little tool pretty handy tool to uh, have these uh, these uh, things on the thing that do the stuff <laughs> you know what I mean you know you know what I mean I don't even have to you're watching it so here's a close-up of the three-way switch you know you push one way it goes bridge the other way it goes neck and then uh, got them positioned that way on purpose this is a uh, an output jack that I had from probably from a previous build that I just never ended up using so you would need one of those same idea uh, you know washer and a nut okay so let's get real we're, we're gonna move on to uh, installing the pickups and then wiring everything all right let's get wired man get serious for a second okay no no I don't want to okay so with the uh, the pickups it comes with all the hardware it comes with the screws it comes with four pads I guess they're kind of like foam pads think of them as springs instead of using springs like on some pickups you know on like strat pickups you got these foam uh, sticky pieces that you put inside the, uh, the guitar I thought you attach them to the pickup but you actually put them you can see where the old ones were um, so yeah they go right inside the cavity where the pickups gonna go and they act as a spring so when you put the pickup on top and you put the screws on top it's got resistance so you can tighten the screw to uh, tighten the four screws because there's actually four so you can do angles and you know up and down and uh, tightening it makes it go down loosening it makes it pop up so that's how you adjust the uh, pickups on this guitar it's actually really nice I like that they're right into the body you don't have to uh, and you can do it through the pick guard when the pick guards installed and uh, here where are where where are no I'm right here uh, we're connecting the uh, the ground to the trem claw so we're gonna solder that on and then they've routed a cavity that you just run the cable through to the uh, the other side and then we're gonna connect it to the wiring so lots of grounds on this that's that's grounds for uh, you know of course here I don't know what I was trying to say I was trying to <laughs> record that part and it was out of focus great good job yeah good job camera right on okay so let's get our pieces out we've got the uh, treble bleed we've got the uh, it's not an orange drop but what kind of what kind of piece is that I can't remember anyways uh, we're gonna bend this one back and solder it to itself so it's self grounding and then we're putting the treble bleed in the left and middle position this is on the volume pot by the way so uh, it's kind of a big big treble bleed I've seen smaller ones I've used smaller ones in other guitars this one's larger and we're gonna bend the wires and then solder it connect it and uh, make sure that smoke you see that smoke there always breathe in deeply because you want you want to get as sick as possible no <laughs> avoid I'm, I'm joking of course avoid breathing that in don't do that it's not nice you don't want to do that okay we're connecting uh, the uh, the thing the uh, the big orange piece of candy with the wires hanging out we are connecting it to the left on the volume pot and to the middle on the the tone pot and then we're connecting a, a white wire that's gonna go somewhere else later 
And uh, of course, I'm following the uh, the official Fender. I'm not following the, uh, the instructions that came with the pickups because those are for a jazz master if you want to have the other controls as well. This is just a two-way, or sorry, two pickup, three-way guitar. So I'm you can download those PDFs. Just, just Google Fender Professional Jazz Master. You'll find a PDF. And you'll know exactly how to follow along here. Anyways, we're grounding. We got a body ground. We've got the output jack grounded, and then a third black ground that's going to connect somewhere else after. Okay, and uh, using helping hands. If you've never soldered before, it's always good to practice on something else first. This isn't. Um, I wouldn't say this is a basic job. This is more advanced. And uh, the helping hands. It's like having a third or fourth pair of hands holding wires down. So here's the three-way switch. We're connecting the black wires from the pickups and one ground uh, to the middle. And then we've got that white cable going to the bottom. You can't see it from this angle, but there's there's two uh, connections on the bottom. They get tapped together or squeezed together and that white cable goes in. So now we're connecting the actual pickups, the hots from the pickups. You got the white and the yellow. And that's it. Um, that looks not too bad, but it wasn't that simple, you know. It, it took a long time, to, a lot longer than you're seeing, basically, is what I'm trying to say. So, put it back together, just put on the pots, uh, sorry, put on the the uh, knobs that go on the pots, and then uh, these ones screw on, so make sure they're smooth. Very nice pots. Let's get the guitar strung up. I'm using Dr. Strings 9 to 42, and let's clip these ends. I'm just going to cut them to this length right now. You see the tool here? It's got the clipper on the end. Very nice. Very handy. It's actually a really good clipper uh, compared to the pliers I have that are rusty and uh, dull. So I guess you know, anything's better, but these are really good. And I mentioned I'd come back to this. It's a tiny little trem spring or vibrato spring and it goes in the hole and then you put it in your arm just like you would normally. And what it does is it doesn't let you fully tighten to the bottom. So you've always got this tension pushing up on it. So it allows it to be a little bit looser, but not fully tight. See that? So yeah, it's, it's really handy to have one of these and it works really well. Let's check it out in slow motion. Okay, we've made it. We've got the guitar together. Now we're gonna do the setup. This is where you make or break the guitar. No, it's not that serious. This is where you do the, the setup, which is fine tuning how well it plays. So the, uh, the Music Nomad kit that I got, the uh, precision gauges and tools, it's got this little guide inside, which is really cool. Um, it's actually gonna save me time because I usually have to always go back and reference. There's basically four steps when I'm doing a setup. And this guide goes through all of them in the same order that I do. So I, I was doing it right. So the first thing we're going to do is neck relief or truss rod adjust ing if you need to. Um, then we got the string action and bridge saddles. Then we got the nut cutting or the nut height, I guess, but we're going to be cutting it. And then you get intonation. So it's not only the tools, it's a really good step by step guide. And I'm not going to have to go reference my, my notes that I had. Or, uh, I'd always forget because I don't do these setups that often so I'm like which which thing do I do first so let's start with the uh, the truss rod or the, you know taking a look at the neck basically okay the first step they've provided this pick and you're gonna use it as a capo I usually just use a capo but this is a cool trick I didn't know you could do this stick it under the strings just like that and then you're gonna push down on the 12th fret on the E string and then use the right feeler gauge. So the feeler gauges are met, are they're labeled. So this one says electric guitar, and you're just checking how much relief you have on the neck, and if you need to adjust it, lefty loosey, righty tighty. I think that's the right right term. <laughs> it's not the technical term. But anyways, mine was good. I don't need to do any adjustment in this case. Okay, next part we're going to take uh, the string action gauge. You can see close up here. It's got all the measurements, double sided, and. Uh, I'm going to take it and do the same capo trick, put the little pick under, and then we're going to measure it at the 12th fret on the low E string, and that's going to determine what your action is. And then, so, you probably can see what I was doing, so here's a closer look. 
looks like I'm around 0 0.06, 0 0.07 around there. And then you can do the same thing on the high E, and those are your two measurements you're going to take, and you're going to keep those. And it's a personal preference. Do you want high action? Do you want low action? And then you're going to take your, your radius um, gauge, and I know my neck is 9.5 inch radius because I bought the neck. I should know this. If you don't, you can hold it up against the neck when the strings aren't on. And now you're going to take that, Basically, you're going to shape the rest of the uh, the saddles. You want to make sure you're blocking it so you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> no. I'm getting a better angle from the top here, maybe. You're going to measure it, um, and adjust them, and make it have that same arc as the 9.5-inch radius. That's the whole point. So all the strings will have the same height going across uh, you know, the neck. And uh, just some fine-tuning. And, yeah, this is not set in stone. You can adjust it the way you want it. And I'm just doing the 9.5 inch radius and then maybe adjust it later. Now, no joke, because I like to joke a lot, but this is the most important part. Cutting your nut and your nut height. And uh, this gauge shows exactly what to do. It's pretty cool. It's, uh, I like that they've written all the text on the side to show you exactly what you need to do. So you're going to find the right gauge for your guitar. They label them, so it's really easy. And then you always want to do this in playing position, so you pick up the guitar, turn it sideways, and uh, you do that pretty much for all these setup tips. And you're going to stick it in the first fret, and they recommend, you know, this is what they, they say, gauge resting on fret, touches, lifts the string, but no open string buzz, no further steps needed. Ga 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 gauge? <laughs> gauge. Gauge resting on the fret does not touch the string, Follow the nut slot to lower the string, and you repeat the, that on each on each slot, and uh, that's what you do. So the nice thing with this Fender neck, it comes with the nut installed, and it's pre-slotted but not pre-cut, so the height isn't correct on the slots. So, so you want to do this in increments. You want to do a little bit because you're not going to really be able to add height back to the nut. You might have to replace the nut. There are ways you can fix it by using like. I've seen people use crazy glue and, uh, you know, build up the nut again if you need to. But really, you don't want to do that. You want to have it right the first time. So do it in little chunks. I usually do it once. I go uh, do this. the next part, which we're going to do is called intonation. I go do that. I go play the guitar for a bit, and then I usually come back to it, and I cut the nut some more. So in my case, I don't have Music Nomad uh, nut files. I've got these Japanese nut files. I'll put a link to these, too. If you and they're not cheap, they are expensive. It's worth it's worth the uh, investment if you're going to be doing this more than once. And uh, let's go through it, and I'm going to show you in super high speed how I do it. We'll do one. We'll do the the low E and regular speed, and then we'll high speed through the rest, and then we'll do, we'll, uh, we'll, uh, we'll watch it. It's it's great times. <laughs> Okay, the final step, unless you have to go back and do some fine tuning, is the intonation adjustment. And so the intonation is what makes the fretted notes play in tune with the open string, right? So you always want to do this in playing position. You're going to tune your guitar to uh, perfect tuning. And then with your finger, you're going to press down on the 12th fret and then see if that octave higher plays in tune. It should be the same. So you got a, a low E and you're going to play E at the 12th should be an E. And if it's flat, you adjust the saddle forward by turning the saddle adjustment screw. And that's in the bridge at the back. And if it's sharp, you adjust it, uh, the saddle backward. And uh, this, this process can take a while, but it's, it's also important. You want to have your intonation good, and you want to have your guitar sounding in tune all the way up the neck. And uh, let's just see. It's not really fun to show, so we'll just watch me do it quickly. And this was after uh, I played it for a little bit, back to some fine, fine tuning, no pun intended, fine tuning the nut cutting. So let's do it again.
All right, now just a little bonus here. I'm just filing the edge of the, the nut, just around it, make it look prettier. I don't know. <laughs> just uh, making it look a little bit better and cleaner rather than sharp and pointy on the tips. And a super bonus, I'm putting some lubricant in the nut slots, which will help with the uh, vibrato system, help the uh, string slide through in case the nut's not perfectly cut yet and uh, helps with uh, helps keep the guitar in tune when you're bending with the uh, the trem or the vibrato whichever way you want to call it now the next section so guitars are tools you know they make music they they are fun toys they're also pieces of art so let's enjoy the art gallery Now all said and done, let's hear it. So I'm playing through a Princeton reverb, and this has a Celestian Blue Alnico, like a 12 inch speaker, and that's the settings, and I'm miking it with a Royer R10 ribbon microphone. That's a tube screamer with the drive rolled all the way down.
in tune after all that plinging. There it is. There it is. Any questions? Leave me a comment. And thanks again to Sweetwater. I know the most common question on all these these uh, parts cast or build videos, people are like, how much did it cost? And usually I keep a running total, but because I didn't buy everything, usually in the past I, I would buy all the parts and make a spreadsheet. Spreadsheet? I don't know what that is. Um, I didn't keep a running total. So what you can do is take a look in the description at each part grab your Texas Instruments calculator and do the math, old school, and let me know the total because I don't know. It's, uh, I'm curious, you let me know. See, I did a switcheroo, making you do the work for something because I already did so much work on this. Like this has been going on for weeks. I did so much work that, uh, so much hard work because I, <laughs> because I already worked so hard on this video, a bunch of my hair fell off compared to the beginning, if you noticed. Don't forget, hey, people are like, you got a haircut. I'm like, no, I got all of them. Don't forget to uh, enter the giveaway I, me I mentioned earlier. And if you're watching this in the future, long past the giveaway ending, um, are you flying a car yet? Does that exist? Like a driving flying car? Okay, bookmark this video, save it if you're gonna do a Jazz Master build style thing. And uh, subscribe if you're new here and go check out things and stuff. And as always, play guitar and have fun and I'll see you in the next video. Take care.